All cataract surgeons have felt the emotion of loss when, after successful cataract extraction, a small tear occurs in the posterior capsule during posterior capsule cleaning. Small capsule tears are usually not a serious complication because in many cases the lens can still be safely placed within the capsular bag and if not within the capsular bag, in the ciliary sulcus. However, one-piece lens designs put somewhat more stress on the capsule during implantation and can cause even the smallest posterior capsule tear to extend right across the entire posterior capsule during implantation of the intraocular lens. You see on this example that the stress of placing this lens through a rather small opening in the anterior capsule creates just enough stress to extend this tear that is small to a large tear across the entire posterior capsule. Fortunately, the lens is in position and this is not a serious complication. It oriented in proper position and was not a serious complication in this particular case. A technique that I developed in 1987 called Posterior Continuous Curvilinear Capsularexis, abbreviated PCCC, can be utilized in the majority of these tears to make them very safe for lens implantation within the capsular bag and even for possible necessary vitrectomy through the opening in the posterior capsule. This technique can also be beneficial in primary posterior capsulotomies utilized at the time of cataract surgery for removal of large posterior fibrotic plaques and in the management of pre-existing openings in the posterior capsule, such as can occur with congenital posterior lenticonus. The incidence of posterior capsule tears in my practice has decreased from 0.41% in 1988 to 0.33% in 1990, with the majority of the tears occurring during polishing or vacuuming the posterior capsule. PCCC is performed with capsule forceps and at times a capsule scissors. I have successfully utilized this technique in 20% of the posterior capsule tears in 1988, 50% in 1989, and 100% in 1990. In order to illustrate most effectively the techniques used to perform a PCCC, we have simulated different capsule tears using saran wrap as a synthetic model. Using capsule forceps, one point of the advancing tear in the posterior capsule is extended and completed into a circle. The flap must be re-grasped a number of times just as with anterior capsule rexus to control the advancing tear. This tear is extended and completed into a circle that encompasses the extent of the original tear and is blended from the periphery to the center as the circle is completed. The saran wrap does not tear as easily as the posterior capsule does, but here illustrates how the capsule flap can tear prematurely. Sometimes the flap is grasped more effectively with the Kelman McPherson forceps, and at other times more effectively with the Craft type capsule forceps. Tearing is continued until the original tear is encompassed by this continuous curvilinear tear that has a smooth border with no jagged edges and no point that can continue into a radial tear. Through this circular opening in the posterior capsule, a vitrectomy can be accomplished safely if required. Another type of tear that can occur is a linear tear. It is not necessary to completely encompass a linear tear. The sharp end of the tear can be blunted by extending it and turning it back to the original tear to create a continuous curvilinear border by blending the tear into the side of the original linear tear. Again, you see that this synthetic model does not behave like the posterior capsule does, but is used to illustrate the technique. With the upper end of 
this tear still within the anterior capsule opening, I will demonstrate blunting both ends of this linear tear. But if at least one can blunt the inferior part of a vertical linear tear, then the lens can be more safely placed within the capsular bag and a vitrectomy performed if necessary. To illustrate the resistance of this continuous curvilinear tear in the capsule, we are putting some pressure on the edges to illustrate that it does not tear. However, if one makes a little snip in the inferior portion with the scissors, we see now that the same force applied extends that sharp end in a radial fashion. Rather than leave these very small tears, hoping that they will not extend during placement of the intraocular lens, I advocate using the scissors to extend it enough to get a hold of one of the edges with the capsule forceps to again complete this into a continuous curvilinear tear. A small tear such as this one was is the one that extended at the beginning of this presentation during implantation of the lens within the capsular bag. We will now again demonstrate the resistance of this circular opening to any radial tears with pressure applied on the edges and illustrate that a vitrectomy, if necessary, can be safely performed through this opening. Here we are simulating a large plaque on the posterior capsule, such as occurred in one of our pediatric cataract patients with a secondary cataract from radiation for rhabdomyosarcoma. This plaque would certainly obscure the vision requiring capsulotomy later and would be difficult to accomplish with a laser. Using a bent 27 gauge needle, we started a posterior capsule tear and continued it in a curvilinear fashion under the lens implant with viscoelastic in the chamber and under the lens. Sometimes these tears can be completed with the bent needle at other times, a delicate capsule forceps is utilized to continue these tears around the circumference of the plaque. This technique may also be used to create a primary posterior capsule opening in pediatric cataract surgery and allow a safe vitrectomy to be formed if required. Again, this curvilinear opening in the capsule would allow safe vitrectomy and certain placement of the lens implant within the capsular bag. The principle of posterior continuous curvilinear capsularexis is to convert linear, triangular, or crescent-shaped tears into continuous curvilinear tears. This principle may also be applied to primary posterior capsulotomies. These openings in the posterior capsule resist extension during vitrectomy if necessary and during placement of the intraocular lens within the capsular bag.